Welcome back, everyone. Michael here with Offshore Citizen. One of our viewers, Vimal, asked me to make a video about how to reduce your global tax or pay less taxes if you're moving to Austria. Now, this will apply not just to people who are moving to Austria, but to people who already live in Austria, whether you're born there, you're a citizen, whatever else. We're going to discuss today how you do international tax optimization, kind of what the rules are applicable to people who are residents of Austria. So let's dive in. Before we do, if you haven't already, please hit the subscribe button, hit the all notification bell. If you'd like help with any of these topics that we cover here on the channel, which is international tax optimization, second residencies, citizenships, relocating abroad, etc., please reach out to me. You can book a call calendly.com forward slash Michael dash Rosmer. There's a link in the description below or send a message to our websites, offshorecitizen.net and offshorecaptus.com. Okay, so first things first, who is a resident of Austria? Austria determines residency based on two criteria. One is if you are domiciled there. So you have to kind of determine that domicile concept, which is somewhat ambiguous, but basically it's the idea that this is your home where you live, where you belong, right? The second is if you are habitually there and they will consider you're habitually there if you spend more than six months a year there. So, or six months, uh, six months at a time. So uh, that's going to trigger uh, Austrian tax residency. So if you're Austrian tax resident, what we're gonna discuss applies to you or if you're thinking about going and becoming Austrian tax resident, this will apply to you. If not, well then it doesn't apply to you. It's worth noting that Austria is a high tax country. Their top tax bracket at 1 million euros a year is 55%, pretty hefty. And uh, so we don't want that. Their uh, corporate tax rate is 25%, so also not great. And they're not really like, you're not gonna get down to paying zero tax in Austria, okay? At least not over the long term. So we can kind of use some of our basic rubrics for understanding here that we want to somehow reduce our taxable income as much as possible, defer as much as possible, and reduce our tax rates as much as possible. So we're gonna be able to potentially, in the right case, this does not apply to everybody, okay? All of these situations, every time I give you guys some sort of a overview of the international tax rules in a particular country, these apply uh, specific to like somebody's case. And so you always need to dive into the details. This is where if you have questions, call us and go through it, etc. Do not assume uh, that you know because it's too easy to overlook some detail. When I'm training my staff, it's like somebody might jump to some conclusion. I'm like, do not generalize, never generalize. Specifics, or like devil is in the details on these things, okay? So that is my word of caution. However, I'm gonna just kind of explain the rules to you. So, I mean, if you're a resident employee, then you know, you're know you in a tough spot. It's, there's not a lot that uh, can be optimized. That's not usually what we're talking about here. Usually we're talking about for the purposes of being an investor or a business owner, in particular a business owner. Investors gets to be a little bit tougher as we're gonna see in a minute. So what do we have to first look at? We have to look at, uh, can we set up some sort of a foreign legal entity? Now, we understand that the rules in Austria for a legal entity is that it's tax resident in Austria, if it's registered in Austria, or if it's managed and controlled in Austria. Meaning, yes, we have to register a company abroad, somewhere in a lower no tax country, and we need to make sure that management control is outside of Austria, okay? So same as pretty much normal in a lot of countries. Number two, uh, of course, foreign entities are still gonna be taxable on their Austrian source income. I've talked lots about this in other videos. Austrian source does not mean that the customers are based in Austria. It could mean that it's operating through a permanent establishment in Austria or something similar, but usually, it depends on the type of income, usually it's where the operations are taking place, okay? So this means that you would want to have remote workers, people in other parts of the world who are working for the company in order to uh, not trigger Austrian taxation, or you could be taxable in Austria on the portion of the income attributable to that permanent establishment or to those people, okay? Fair enough. So what we wanna do is we wanna take our business operations, we wanna put them into a foreign company, we wanna make sure that foreign company is genuinely foreign according to the Austrian rules. We wanna make sure that we have foreign operations for that company, and then what? Are we, uh, are we good? No, not exactly. Now what we have to pay attention to is we need to still make sure that we navigate a couple things. So the first are the CFC rules, okay? So again, I've got videos specifically on CFC rules, if you wanna cover that, 
But in Austria, the CFC rules work as follows. If the company is uh, more than, I believe the cutoff is 50% owned by Austrians, then it's considered to meet the standards of being a CFC. There's some exemptions, carve outs, we'll talk about in a second. And then if the income, if more than a third of the income is passive income, then it will trigger these rules. So what does this mean? If you have all active income, no problems, you're good. Second, if you have less than a third of the income is passive income, also you're good. So this is an improvement over say what they have in Canada, right? In Canada, passive income period is no good. Here, uh, up to a third is fine. So that's good. The, so that company, this is why I say investors may have a tougher time because likely investor income is probably gonna be more than that share. Uh, when we're talking about some of the car votes, the car votes are there's an exemption if you have uh, real activity in those uh, countries where you're operating business through assets and equipment, etc. that's real in that country, then that will give you a kind of a car vote from the CFC rules. Also, they have a concept of low tax, which is their cutoff for low tax is 12.5%. So, uh, you know, that's something as well. And usually this is pretty normal. 12.5% is uh, what you'd have in Ireland or Cyprus, et cetera. So within the EU, usually there's car votes in the EU for uh, other EU companies, because that's kind of the, the assumption of the free movement of people and goods and so on and so forth. So you wanna make sure you're not triggering the CFC rules, okay? Assuming all those things are true, you probably want to have an Austrian company, okay? You want that Austrian company then to probably own the foreign company. You don't inherently need to do this in Austria because uh, it doesn't necessarily give you, uh, the, you're not necessarily in a situation where you need to take advantage of say a participation exemption, but the fact that you can, there are some advantages to that. So in Austria, there's a participation exemption, meaning that assuming a variety of factors are true and it has to do with percentage of ownership and things like this, that you've held it for over a year, then you can repatriate dividends from a foreign company back into an Austrian parent company tax-free. The other thing that happens is you're in a situation where uh, you can receive dividends as an individual for 27.5% tax. So if you just do the math, I mean, this is half of the actual tax rate that you would pay as an individual. So instead of 55% at the top end, you're paying 27.5. 27.5, not an amazing tax rate, but certainly a lot better than, uh, than 55%. Depending on what's going on, sometimes, of course, they have transfer pricing rules and some of these other things in Austria. So you may end up having, saying, okay, well, I have some operations, I'm working for the company, et cetera, I'm doing something in Austria. So in that case, you're gonna attribute some income to Austria. You would typically do that through an Austrian company. The Austrian company would do certain things, the international company would do other things, and you'd try and income split it and make the majority of the income as much as possible show up in the foreign company rather than the domestic company. But that's a case by case. Like all of these depend on, you know, what it is that you're doing in terms of having an operating company. So, yeah, that's a, that's a basic overview. So, kind of mental model. Assuming you have a business that you can relocate or some sort of activities, uh, some sort of income that can be relocated, which not everybody does. You'd probably have an Austrian company. Don't. In not all cases do you need it, but usually we would. The Austrian company would own a foreign company. The foreign company needs to be genuinely foreign. The genuinely foreign company needs to have genuine foreign operations. It needs to not uh, be considered a CFC, which generally means you need to not have one third, uh, more than one third of the income be passive. Again, there's some car votes there. Uh, then the company will make money, hopefully pay you know low or no profit uh, or no tax on the profit. Then it can pay out a dividend to the Austrian company, which hopefully, if it's everything's structured properly, can receive it tax-free, and that company can pay out to the shareholder at some point, and can, the shareholder can pay 27.5% tax instead of 55% tax. Now, a couple things to note about this. Clearly, you have an ability to defer, so you can, you don't have to bring all that money back immediately. So although we're saying, hey, you end up with 55%, you may actually not need to end up with 55%, or sorry, with 27.5%. You may be in a position where you say, okay, well, the company makes profit, let's take the money, let's reinvest the profit, let's grow that and build up our asset base. That's gonna be, say, one, less than one third of our overall income, and so we're good to go. Then, you know, at some time in the future, after we've compounded, maybe we bring it back, et cetera. So, totally depends on the situation, but 
uh, hopefully gives you a little bit of an idea of the loose structure that you would do. Some people will probably be asking like, what's the best country, et cetera. There is no best country. It really depends on the business that you're in, where your customers are, how they pay you, what currencies you deal with, what sorts of products and services you're dealing with, what are the VAT consequences, where your operations are, where your staff are, what are the social contributions, et cetera, et cetera. Like there's a lot of factors, right? And so it could be a handful of, you know, we probably would shortlist 10 different countries or something and then narrow down from there. But in theory, it could be 20 or 30. So I hope that helps. If you have questions, put them in the comments below, reach out, book a call with us, and I will see you on the next video.